Right. I, uh, Kelly and I got invited a couple of years ago to uh, go and speak um, at the C3 conference in Sydney. And uh, they put us in this hotel and um, uh, we were jet lagged. So we thought, oh, we need to get an early night. So we were getting ready to go to bed. And as we we're getting ready to go to bed, we'd close the curtains and all that. We started to hear fireworks. So we're like, what's, yeah? So we got out of bed, we opened the curtains and we were on the 37th floor of this building and we looked out of the window and we couldn't believe it. The fireworks were literally outside of our window, below us, and we were above the fireworks. So we pulled two chairs by the window, we sat there and we had a private display of fireworks for 30 minutes. Um, we'd never seen fireworks from that angle before. We'd only seen them from down below, looking up. And it's very interesting. You see something completely different. You know, perspective is so, so important. What do we need? What do you and I need? We need insight. Insight is like looking at something through a microscope. We need foresight. Foresight is like looking at something through a telescope. We need oversight, like being in a helicopter and looking down at where you live. You see it differently. We need insight, we need foresight, we need oversight. Now, who has insight, foresight, oversight? Only God. He's the only one that has insight, foresight, and oversight. And that's why it's so important to tune into God so that we can gain God's perspective. And when we gain God's perspective, we gain a little bit more insight, a little bit more foresight, a little bit more oversight, and he gives us hindsight, which we desperately need. In other words, let's... let's learn from life. Let's learn from the past. If we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. Wow. Yeah, ju that was, Nancy, that was really good, actually. <laughs> okay, I'll say it and then you repeat it, okay? <laughs> if we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. The things we look at change. So I, I want to encourage you to look in five directions. One, look up. Number one, look, look up. Okay, one of the writers of the Bible, the psalmists in Psalm 121 wrote this. I lift my eyes to the mountains where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I look up. I look up. I look to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the maker of heaven and earth. You see, most of the time, we're all looking down, aren't we? We're looking down the whole time. We've got our little phones and we're looking down. I mean, I don't know how people do it in the street. They're walking, they're like, they're, they're walking down like this. Now, have you noticed this, right? They're looking down. When they don't have a phone, they're like that. They all need to go and see a chiropractor. It's like we've adopted that little posture and most of us having problems with our necks, our shoulders. You know, we, we got the iPad. We're, we're kind of looking at the iPad in the, on the bed or in the chair. And, and it's all of this is happening. Look up. Look up. Don't look down. Look up. A lady went to see her doctor and because uh, she was feeling a bit anxious and depressed and all of this sort of thing and the doctor said to her look um, I understand that you you walk from your house uh, to the train station to go to work and it's a 15 minute walk yes that's right well what I want you to do this is what I'm going to prescribe for you in the next four weeks when you walk 
to the station to go to work, I want you to look at the rooftops of all the houses. That's my prescription for you. Can you do that for four weeks and come back and see me? After four weeks, she goes back and sees her doctor, and the doctor says, how are you feeling? She goes, it's all gone. The anxiety's gone. The, this oppression has gone. You see, because the doctor made her look up. When she was looking up, her chest opened, so therefore she was breathing much better. And she was looking up rather than looking down at herself, looking down at the road, looking down at her feet. You know, we've got this encouragement. Look up. Look up. Look to the Lord. The psalmist again says, look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Always seek God. Always seek God. Do you know, I would rather stand with God and be judged by the world than stand with the world and be judged by God. That was good. Right? Repeat that after me. I would rather stand with God and be judged by the world than stand with the world and be judged by God. Look up, look up. Number two, look in. Number one, look. Number two, look. Look in. Now, the Bible in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see things. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And the psalmist wrote in Psalm 139, search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and see if there is any offensive way in me. Search. So you do look up and you're looking up to the mountains. Who, who, where? It's God, the maker of heaven. But then you look in. Why? Because you have to examine your own heart. You have to examine your mind. You have to look in. Uh, Killy and I, we, we went to this, well, we, we've traveled extensively. And, and we're put up at hotels or we stay with friends. But anyway, we were put up in this one hotel and it was pretty classy. And, uh, and uh, uh, you know, it's, it's nice, isn't it? When you go into the bathroom and... and they had this small mirror. Well, first of all, they had this massive mirror, which really didn't do, you know, you looked at it and it was like, oh my, you're seeing too much. And, um, but then they had the little mirror, this little mirror like that. Now, you know, we don't have a little mirror. So I'm like, I'm a little kid when I'm in these little rooms. I'm like pulling the drawers out, having a look. And so I pull the mirror out and it, as I pull it out, I realize it's a magnifying glass <laughs> and the light came on and I looked at myself and I scared myself. I shouted to Killy, Killy! She came in because she thought I'd slipped in the bathroom. I said, I can't believe it. Look at my nose. I've got blackheads. <laughs> now, you see, this is interesting, isn't it? The big mirror, when I looked into the big mirror, I couldn't see any blackheads. I look pretty good in the big mirror. Well, fr from the neck up. But when I looked into the magnifying glass, oh my word, what's gone wrong with my nose? I've got these mountain moles in my nose. You know, now you see, can you imagine looking into God's mirror? Just look into God's mirror. Like, what does he see? What does he see in my heart? What does he see in my mind? You know, most people today have got sex on the brain, and that's the worst place to have it. <laughs> What's going on in my brain? What's going on in my heart? When my, uh, I've got, we've got three sons, and when my son Michael, my, our firstborn, 
he was uh, about four, he and I went to get a Mother's Day present for his mum, Killy, my wife. So I took him shopping and we walked into this store. As we walked into this store, literally we walked in, there was this massive sign and the sign said, all breakages must be purchased. Do not touch. I mean, why didn't I just walk out? I mean, I know what I'm like, but I've got a four-year-old. Anyway, we go in there, and because it said do not touch, what do both of us do? <laughs> both of us touch. It's almost like it says don't touch, so it's like, you know, you're just kind of trying to touch the edge, you know, just to prove that you can touch, you know, even though it says don't touch. But, of course, little Michael touched a bit more than I touched, and, and I saw it from the corner of my eye as he knocked this thing, and it, I almost saw it in slow motion, where it was like, no, and then it fell, and it smashed on the floor. The manager stood there within two seconds and pointed to the sign. Do not touch. All breakages must be purchased. I said, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. He did it. He did it. It wasn't me. And I thought, why don't I just walk out and leave him? Well, he can sort it out. He, he touched, he broke it, he should pay for it. Listen, there is no way little Michael could pay the damages. Only his daddy could pay for it. You see? There's no way you and I can pay for all the damages. Only our heavenly Father, through Jesus, can pay for the damages. So what do we do? We look up, we look in. We look in and we're realistic. Yeah, my heart, my heart's not good. It's not good. My mind isn't good. I, I need cleaning. I need to be cleaned. That's what I need. I need cleansing. So we look up. One. Number two, we look in. Number three, we look back. Number one, we look. Number two, number three, we read this. In John 1, verse 29, John, John the Baptist, saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, there is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You're aware now of all your damages. Now, I've got great news for you. Look back. There, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. All this sin in here and in here, he's the one that can take the sin of the world away. He is the one. He's the one. The Lamb of God. I love the analogy of the artist, famous artist, went back to the very rural community where he was born and brought up. And he's just walking around some of the, uh, looking at the stores. And there's an antique shop. He looks in the antique shop and he cannot believe what he sees. In the window is one of his masterpieces. It was a painting that he'd painted years before he was famous. The painting was scratched. The painting was dirty. The frame was broken. But he couldn't go in there and say to the owner of the antique shop, that's my painting, give it back to me. If he wanted it back, he had to buy it back before he could clean it, restore it, and reframe it. That's what Jesus did. Jesus Christ died on the cross to purchase you and me back to clean us, restore us, and reframe us. There's the Lamb of God. He can do that. 
That's what he does. And you and I can be cleansed. You and I can be restored. You and I can be reframed. We were in London, driving in London, and I saw this big white van, and on the side of it, 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 was, it was painters and decorators, and they were advertising their company. And they, it was painters and decorators, and underneath, established in 2019. And I thought, you're idiots. I felt like putting the window down and saying, are you idiots? 2019, what, you've got a lot of experience. <laughs> oh, let's ring them. They've been in existence since 2019. They've got a lot of experience. What kind of nonsense is that? There's a store in London, in the centre of London, in Piccadilly. It's called Fortnum and Mason. Okay, Queen does her shopping there. Outside the store, there's a big sign, and it says this, established in 1707. Now, I think they know how to run a department store. <laughs> uh, that's a little bit of experience there, isn't it? Right? Christianity established 2,000 years ago Billions of satisfied customers. <laughs> That's not bad, is it? That isn't bad, is it? Hey? Billions of satisfied customers. Before we can see the cross as something done for us, we need to see the cross as something done by us. Our old history ends with the cross, and our new history begins with the resurrection. So what do we do? One, we look up. Number two, we look. In. Number three. Look number four, we look around. We look around. Why? Because once you've had your heart cleansed, once you've had your mind washed, and I remember when I became a believer and a follower of Jesus, my mother said to me, you're brainwashed. I said, mom, my brain has been washed. If you only knew, mom, what was in my brain, you'd be pleased it got washed. <laughs> you see, and once you're restored, once you're reframed, you're empowered by the presence of his spirit. You know, we felt it. When, when the worship group led us this morning, I, I was there and I, I could feel the presence of Jesus. And his, his spirit empowers us to look around. To look around. Why? Matthew 5, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see. Yeah? So, of course, we look up, we look in, we look back. But now we've encountered the truth. We, we look around. Now, you and I cannot help everyone, but we can help someone. And we look around and we do what we can. Why? Because people don't care how much we know until they know how much we care. They don't care how much we know. They want to know how much do we actually care. Some people create happiness wherever they go. And some people create happiness whenever they go. <laughs> Be one of the people that creates happiness wherever you go, rather than whenever you go. You know, there are two reasons today why people are not yet Christians. One, they have never met a Christian. Two, they have met a Christian. 
you and I can make the difference in someone else's life. Make a difference. Make a difference. Serve the Lord. Serve and support the church. Be a channel of God's generosity to others. Look up. Look in. Look back. Look around. Do good to somebody. And number five, look ahead. Look ahead. Number one? Number two? Number three? Number four? Number five? Look ahead. And we read in the Bible, 2 Peter chapter 3, you ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. In keeping with this promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. This is the hope that we have. We are a people, Christians are a people of hope. We have hope. God's got this. We've read the last chapter. We know how it's going to end. And so we got hope. You know, a lot of people's hope today is a bit like a hospital gown. You're usually not as well covered as you think you are. (laughs) We have hope. I tell you honestly, life without Christ is a hopeless end. But life with Christ is an endless hope. Life without Christ is a hopeless end, but life with Christ is an endless hope. And Job in the Bible, in Job chapter 11, he says, you will feel secure because there is hope. And so Jesus says in Matthew 24, therefore, therefore, keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. The Lord will come. The Lord is coming. And the Lord will will fix it all. And in the meantime, I'm going to be looking up. I'm going to be looking in. I'm going to be looking back. I'm going to be looking around. And I'm going to do all this with an expectation that I'm looking forward to him coming and restoring it all. But I'm going to do my part now. That's what I'm going to do. Go as far as you can see and see how far you can go. That was good. (laughs) Go as far as you can see and see how far you can go. Look up. Go as far as you can see and see how far you can go. Look around. Go as far as you can see and see how far you can go. Because every time you take a step forward, you can see further. Go as far as you can see and see how far you can go. The journey of faith, the journey of Christianity, um, uh, there are four words that can help us in understanding its journey. I think it involves four words words. The first word is admit. The first word is admit. admit. What do I have to admit? I have to admit my heart is dirty. My heart's broken. I have to admit my mind is dirty. I have to admit that that painting is scratched and dirty. I have to admit that Jesus purchased for me forgiveness to cleanse it, restore it, reframe it. It's an admission. It's a confession. I admit this. Yes, I admit it. Do you know, there's a, it's so cathartic to actually say, yes, I do admit it. I do, because so often when we don't admit it, we're holding it all in. We're holding it all in. And you admit it, you confess it, and there's, oh, there's, there's a release it's an admission, one admit. But 
You've got to move on. Two, commit. You've got to commit. And when Killy and I got married, 23rd of July, 1983, the minister said to me, will you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? How would, he, how would he have responded if I said, well, I've been thinking about it, actually? <laughs> he didn't ask me, have I been thinking about it? He said, will you? I said, well, I get rather excited <laughs> when I think about it. Well, he didn't say, do you get excited about it? He says, will you? Will you? And you you've got to exercise your will that, you know, from moving from an admission to a commitment. And I said, I, I will. Those are the words. I will. And then the minister turned to Killian and said, will you take this idiot to be your lawful wedded husband? <laughs> yeah, but can you see, I think many people today just don't exercise their will and make that commitment. I admit, I commit. I commit how do I commit? Oh, all sorts of ways, but one beautiful one, last book, book of the Bible, Revelation. Jesus stands at the door, knocks. If you hear the knock, open the door, let Jesus in. When you open the door and let Jesus in, that's a commitment. Welcome, come in. I'm making a commitment, come in. Now, admit, commit. You don't stop there, you submit. You have to submit. In fact, Pastor Joe uh, mentioned it earlier uh, about let's surrender. That's what that means. Surrender. It's a submission. You see, when you open the door and you let Jesus in, where does he go? Some people open a cupboard and they go, get in there. Shut the door. <laughs> because what they want, they want Jesus in the house, but they don't want Jesus influencing the house. I mean, you know, just imagine Killy and I, uh, uh, Pastor Joe and Nancy, they invite us to their home for dinner, and we're there having dinner, and then I say, oh, excuse me, can I just use the toilet, please? And they say, oh, yeah, yeah, it's just around there and uh, on the right. I say, oh, thanks very much. So I go there, I go to the loo, I come out of the loo, and I think, oh, let me have a look around. I just, you know, I'll go upstairs. I'll just go upstairs and have a look. Yeah, yeah, and I thought, oh, let me, let's see how tidy their bedroom is. Right, and then I start opening the cupboards just to see what kind of shirts Pastor Joe wears, you know. And anyway, I don't go back for half an hour. Now, they think, oh, he must have stomach problems or something. <laughs> but then they come searching for me, and they find me upstairs. They go, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm just having a look around. What do you mean you're having a look around? You can't look around. Now, you see, that's true. I can't look around without their permission. But we transfer a similar mentality to Jesus. We kind of go, what are you doing? We go, I'm looking around. You can't look around. This is my house. No, no. What we've got to do is invite him down to the basement to clear out the cobwebs. Invite him to the attic to clear out the bats. Invite him to the kitchen, the bedroom, the dining room. There are three scriptures in the Bible. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Do not resist the Holy Spirit. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit. So in other words, come in, Jesus, into my house. Go anywhere and do anything in my house. Because it's your house. That, that is called submission. Yeah? And, and that's a lifetime. A lifetime. You know? We, we have our windows cleaned. A window cleaner comes every couple of months and cleans the windows. And we say, oh, the windows have been cleaned. Well, they haven't really. That's not quite correct, is it? Only the outside were cleaned, not the inside. And if you don't clean the inside, they're not really clean, are they? You see, Jesus cleans the windows. You start seeing differently. Admit, commit, submit, transmit. Transmit. You see, we have a responsibility and a calling and a commission from the Lord Jesus Christ that once we engage, connect, we now transmit this message. That is the essence of the Christian message. Thanks for coming.
because I didn't look at my watch, and <laughs> that means it's time to land the plane. <laughs> Can you play very mellow Amazing Grace? Just like mellow? Can you do that? Or am I stressing you? <laughs> Guys, that's it. That's it. So I've given you two messages today, really. One message is to encourage all of you, wherever you are in, in your journey of faith, look up, look in, look back, look around, look forward. And while you're doing all of that, keep admitting, committing, submitting, transmitting. Now, some of us here today, maybe you're saying, whoa, if I say to you now, okay, review, reflect, and respond. And you might say, well, I've admitted. I've admitted. Have you committed? If you haven't committed, commit. Some of you might be saying, I've admitted and committed good have you submitted submit some of you might be saying no I have admitted I have committed I have submitted are you transmitting transmit start transmitting it to others so today any kind of reflection review response it involves all of us. It involves me as well. I mean, I, I've got to preach this to myself. Do I, you know, oof. is there something new I need to admit? Do I need to make a fresh commitment? Do I need to make a new submission? Do I need to make a new commitment to transmitting? So in a moment, what I'm going to suggest we do Maybe you've not even begun this journey. Well, begin the journey today. Open that door. Let Jesus in. Others of you, it might be that you need today to make a fresh commitment or a fresh submission or a fresh surrender. So what I'm going to suggest is, if you want to begin the journey for the first time or make a recommitment, I'm going to ask you in just a moment just to stand up. Just stand up wherever you are. Use your whole body to express your will. And then I'm going to pray a very simple prayer. I'll ask you to pray the prayer, and then I'm going to say a prayer for you. And you can sit down. And at the end of the service, all we want to do is just pray for you. And we want to give you this little book that I've written as a little gift to take home. Come for that prayer afterwards. I'm telling you now, this is like full disclosure, because I don't like surprising people at the end. That's what I'm going to do. You know? And I'm going to ask you to come and, and receive a prayer. Sometimes... When there's an important document, you need it countersigned, don't you? And it's a bit like that. Someone saying, I agree with what you stood for. And I'm countersigning it. And I'm going to pray that into you. So just close your eyes. Just take that moment to reflect, review, and respond. If you want to begin the journey, either for the first time or as a way of recommitting your life or surrendering, please stand. Can you stand now? Just stand. Don't miss this opportunity. Don't miss this opportunity. I'm going to pray a prayer. I'm going to pray this prayer phrase by phrase. And just pray the prayer. 
And even if you're sitting down, you want to just reaffirm your faith, pray this prayer. Jesus, I come to you now. Together, Jesus, I come to you now. Just as I am. Just as I am. I know I have done many things wrong. I know I have done many things wrong. And I ask you to forgive me. And I ask you to forgive me. Cleanse my life. Cleanse my life. Set me free from the past. Set me free from the past. I open the door of my life now. I open the door of my life now. Come in by your Holy Spirit. Come in by your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your presence and your peace. Fill me with your presence and your peace. I commit and submit myself to you. I commit and submit myself to you. And I choose from this day on, and I choose from this day on to transmit this message to others, to transmit this message to others. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer. Amen. Stay standing for a moment. In the name of Jesus Christ, I announce and I pronounce his forgiveness. May you know the truth and the reality of that prayer that you've prayed. We pray for your protection and for all of us to know that protection. As we look up, as we look in, as we look back, as we look around and as we look forward. We pray, Lord, that you would bless us and help us to be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, amen.